Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about how to perform transformations on functions that are not necessarily parent functions. So in 1.2 part one, we focused on how do we apply transformations on functions and on parent functions. And we focused on how to write it in function notation. And then we focused on how to write it or apply that to a particular function. We talked about the importance of the order that we list transformations in so that we can identify if we have a followed by situation, if that order is going to be impacted. If what is being followed by, if what's happening last is out of order, then we have to add parentheses to make sure that that transformation applies to everything it is supposed to. So if you miss any of those key ideas, make sure you check out 1.2 part one transforming functions, because in today's lesson, we're really going to focus on how to apply transformations, but to a function that's not the parent function. So let's go ahead and look through some examples. So we're going to start by actually doing exactly what we did in the last video. We're going to look at a generic function g, we know that g is a function of f, and we're going to perform the transformation that is specified here. So this says that g of x is equal to a translation 4 to the left from f and down 2. So if I'm writing this using function notation, 4 to the left means plus 4 on the inside, and down 2 means minus 2 on the outside. So this is what it looks like to write it in function notation, and this is what we did in the last video. The key difference in this video is that we're going to apply this transformation to something that's not just a parent function. So I want to sort of establish some things notationally to make sure that we understand what this function notation is saying, because what this function notation is saying is that to find g, we plug x plus 4 in for x in f. So everywhere that we see an x, we plug in x plus 4. And then after we've done that inside the function, we subtract 2. So it's almost like this is our recipe, or these are our directions, how to find g from f. And I think it's really important to make that connection. That's why we're writing it like this. So we know what to do to this function f to figure out what g is. So again, whatever is inside, whichever function we're looking at, whatever is inside here, we plug this in for f, sorry, for x in the function. If it happened to be a function where there was more than one x, let's say that our function was x squared plus 2x, then everywhere that there's an x, we would plug in whatever it is that it says to plug in right here. So in the case of the problem that we're talking about here, everywhere that I see an x in my original function, I'm going to replace with x plus 4. So I'm going to just go ahead and actually rewrite the original function part. So I'm going to keep g because our whole goal is to find g. To find g, we need to take f, which is the absolute value of x minus 2, and we need to plug in x plus 4. This goes in everywhere that we see an x here, except I said x plus 4, and then I wrote x plus 2. So everywhere that we see an x, all of the x's are becoming x plus 4's. Everything else about the function f is going to stay the same, and everything else that was already written on the outside with g is going to stay the same. So the minus 2 is still here. The g of x is still here. This f parentheses, that's where this green absolute value of minus x minus 2 came in. So now all we need to do is simplify what we have here. So g of x is equal to inside parentheses plus 4 and minus 2 is going to become x plus 2. And then we still have the minus 2 on the outside. So this is our new function. I could plug this into Desmos and graph this function. This is a function that exists without needing to know any other piece of information. This version up here it does specify in the directions it wants us to show this, use function notation. This version up here is like the recipe or the directions on how to take f to get g. So I really want you to think about that. We're translating the words into notation that is basically instructions. What do I do to f to get g? And then in blue, we're actually coming here and we're doing that stuff to f to figure out what g is. 
So that's what this lesson is going to focus on. We have four more examples that we're going to work through, and then that's it. All right, so here are our next two examples. We're going to go through the same process where first we're going to write the directions in function notation, so translate the words into function notation, and then actually perform the transformation on the function. So g of x is reflected over the x-axis. Over the x-axis, you should be asking yourself, is that inside or outside? x-axis is on the outside. So reflecting it on the out outside. And then this is like a different verbiage to say followed by. So I'm going to need to make sure I check the order here. And then translated one to the right and two up. So one to the right is happening inside. It's the only horizontal thing that's happening. So it's okay. We don't have to worry about the order there. It's the only horizontal thing that's being listed. What I do need to worry about the order for is this plus two, this up two on the outside. So I need to ask myself when I list my vertical transformations, what's the order that I'm supposed to list them in? And just as a reminder, for vertical transformations, we're supposed to list reflections, stretches, and shrinks. And really, those two could be swapped. And then we're supposed to list translations last. And the translation is listed last here. So we don't have to worry about the order being messed up. So now we have the function notation version of our answer. So this is our recipe. This is our guide, our directions telling us what do we do to f to find g? So we first translated it from words into math, and now we're going to apply this math to this function. So what is this math saying? It's saying that we're going to take the opposite of this function. So instead of positive 2x squared and negative 5, we're going to take the opposite of that. That's going to become negative 2x squared and positive 5. We're going to take the opposite of the function. We're going to plug in Everywhere that we see an x, everywhere that we see an x, we're going to plug in x minus 1. And then after we've done both of those two things to the function, lastly, we're going to add 2. So that's going to affect this constant at the end. Now, you could in theory apply all those transformations at the same time, but that seems like a lot to try and do. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to keep the stuff this stuff, the reflection and the um, plus two, I'm going to keep that the same and I'm going to plug in the function f. So I know that I'm going to take the opposite of this f, which is 2x squared minus 5. But remember, we're substituting something else in for x squared. Instead of it just being x squared, it's going to be x minus 1. So 2 times the quantity x minus 1 squared minus 5. So what have I done from the first step to the second step? I substituted in f of x minus 1. I plugged x minus 1 into f. That is f of x minus 1. So that's what I see inside these purple square brackets here. Now I'm going to apply that transformation. We said we're going to take the opposite of f. So I'm going to take the opposite of 2 and the opposite of negative 5. So that's going to give me g of x equals negative 2 times x minus 1 quantity squared plus 5 because I'm distributing that negative and then I still have this plus 2 on the outside. So to clean this up, I'm just going to combine that 5 and 2, negative 2 times x minus 1 quantity squared plus 7. So it's a lot to keep in mind, and that's why I really suggest that you take steps and you don't try and do everything all at the same time, because when you try and do everything all at the same time, that's when we make little mistakes and they sort of domino on us. Let's go ahead and look at number three. G of X has a vertical stretch of five and, so no followed by, nothing to worry about there, is translated up nine units. So I'm going to encourage you to pause the video and see if you can just write G as a function of F and then unpause the video and see how you did. Okay, hopefully you had time to do that. Vertical stretch of five means five times the function. Up nine means plus nine. So we have G of X is five times F of X plus nine. This is our function notation. We went from words to math. Now we're going to apply that math to our function f. So what is it that we're doing to f? 
Well, unlike this problem where we had to substitute in x minus 1 where we have x, this just says f of x. So I don't have to plug anything else on the inside here. x gets to just stay exactly the way it is now. So what am I doing to my function f? I'm taking my function f and I'm multiplying it by 5. So this is going to eventually get multiplied by 5. Then I'm adding 9. Multiply by 5, add 9. We're just reading the math. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to keep my 5 in front where it says f of x. I'm going to plug in exactly what f is, and I'm going to keep my plus 9 out here. Well, f of x is 3 times x minus 1, sorry, x plus 1 quantity squared. The only thing I can simplify here is multiplying that 5 by the 3 to get 15 times x plus 1 quantity squared plus 9. Okay, we're going to look at a couple more examples, and the next one is actually really similar. It's so similar, I'm going to make sure I keep number 3 on the paper because I want you to see the very slight differences between the two. Okay, it's not by accident that these two problems look so similar. Number three and number four both have the same function f, and they both have a translation up seven and a vertical stretch of five, or sorry, up nine and a vertical stretch of five. So what's the difference? The difference is the order and the difference is the words followed by. So let's start pretending we didn't notice that this is very similar to the problem we just did. G of x is translated up nine, followed by a vertical stretch by a scale factor of 5. So up 9 means plus 9. Followed by means I need to be concerned about the order, so I'm going to come back and look at my order. I'm supposed to list, or I'm supposed to perform, reflections, stretches, and shrinks, and then after that, translations. This is the opposite order of that. To compensate, that means this stretch that I'm doing is going to apply to everything in the function. So this still looks really similar to what we had up here. The big difference is that this 5 is going to impact the 9, and it didn't impact the 9 before. So g of x is actually going to be 5 times f of x plus 45 because this 5 is going to distribute. In terms of the new part, how that impacts our function, it really doesn't change what the process of what we do. This whole thing is going to get plugged in for f of x. It's still f of x, not f of x plus 2, so we don't have to worry about changing what we're plugging in for x. So really everything else is going to stay the same, and I'm going to substitute in 3 times x plus 1 quantity squared. My 45 is going to stay, and then again I can multiply my 5 times my 3 to get 15 plus x. Here we go. And there we have our transformed function. So see how that order and the followed by totally change this problem. If I add 9 after I do the stretch or shrink, where it starts or what the y-intercept is is only going to be 9. But if I if I translate and then stretch that's 45 instead of 9 that is a significant difference all right we're going to work through one more example and then go ahead and wrap up this video okay if you're feeling confident i'm going to encourage you to pause the video and do the function notation part and the application of it together and if you're not feeling comfortable yet that's okay we can work through it together but go ahead and pause the video and give yourself a chance Hopefully you had time to pause the video and try. G of X is a horizontal stretch of 3 and is being reflected over the Y axis. So horizontal happens inside and it's the inverse of what we think it should be. So instead of 3, we're going to see one third. Reflection over the Y axis also happens inside. So everything is happening inside and it's happening directly to our x value. So nothing outside, no adding, no multiplying. These two transformations both happen inside. So we've translated the words into function notation. Now we need to apply what we see. G, to find G, we take F and we plug in negative one-third of X. So everywhere that we see an X, we plug in negative one-third of x. 
everything else about g and f is going to be the same. So g of x is going to be, well, let's see what f is. f is the absolute value of 2 times x plus 1 minus 1. I'll make my absolute value a little bigger there. So everything else I'm taking from here and what I'm seeing is going to need to go inside parentheses. Oops, let's use that green. Is what I already wrote up here. So negative one third x. So you could simplify this. G of x is going to equal the absolute value of negative two thirds of x plus one. Close my absolute value minus one. So key ideas in this section, just like in the last section, which again, I encourage you to watch that video if you have not already, really focus on the order that things are happening in. Spend the time to write it in function notation, especially because these questions specifically asked you to, before you try and perform the transformation. But the whole reason, the purpose behind writing it in function notation is so that we can translate the words into function notation so that we can say how G relates to F. That idea makes it easier to perform the actual transformation. So go ahead and write down any questions you have, and I look forward to supporting you on this. Thanks for listening.